Welcome everybody. Um, I've got my NABU open today. Today I'm going to be doing three things. One, I've got to get my fan filed down. Um, as I mentioned in the past video, is a common flaw with these fans. And it's definitely sticking as I rotate it. In fact, it's sticking on is it every blade yeah it looks like it's every blade needs to get they're all rubbing it looks feels like it's up there but okay so that's the first thing i have to do is file down those fan blades um the next thing i have to do is get this connected so that's going to be wiring my din cable here I gotta strip these ends off and feed them into the appropriate spots here. Am I on shot? Okay, there we go. So I have to strip these cables off and I'm gonna have to feed them into the appropriate pin headers here, which will then connect to this and I can connect this up to my laptop. And once those two things are done, I should be able to fire this up and have my Nabu running. So, all right, let's start with getting this fan off. So just to kind of show what this looks like let me get this on the camera so this fan has three screws holding it in place there's a spot for a fourth one but they don't have it drilled out because it would be too hard to get at even getting at this one's going to be a bit of a pain I'm going to have to get a pliers in there and hold it while I unscrew it okay so I'm going to get that fan out and then I'll be right back alright got the fan out now, the next thing I need to do is take these three screws out. That will allow me to pull the fan out of its casing, and then I can start filing them down. So I had to take the uh, screws out of here, and then there's also a grounding strap that was connected to the fan. That's a little hard to see. But there's a green wire here that was attached um, right there. So, okay, let me take the screws out and then I'll show you what it looks like once I pull that apart. All right, fan is apart. So two things I had to do. One, I had to remove those screws and I also had to remove this little clip here so that this wire could move freely and let me disconnect the housing from the cable. So now what I need to do is I need to fan down, uh, uh, file down all of these fan blades. I saw some people did some scaring on the inside here too, but I'm going to just try filing these down a little bit and see if I can solve the problem there. Okay, so I'll, let's see, I've got my little file set here. And so all I'm going to be doing is for each one of these, Just filing down the tops of it. Basically just getting rid of all that paint. And so I'm going to do that for each one of the blades. And uh, I'll be right back and show you the results. Okay. Got it working. Well, got it fixed. So now my fan is turning without any rubbing, which is nice. So... Things to note, if you're doing this fan repair, um, like I said before, you got to make sure you take this clip off so that this cable will give enough slack to be able to push the in case the fan out of the uh, enclosure here. Um, there's a number of screw holes on the back of this fan thing, and so lining these three back up is a little, can be a little bit finicky, but just be careful. Make sure you, get all, see, you can see all three screw holes before you start screwing it back together. Um, the, fa the filing process in general, um, each of these fan blades, you want to make sure you get every piece of paint off the edges of it. Um, I missed a couple of those spots, right, especially at the, at the corners. Um, those are the parts that definitely dragged on the outside. So I had to take this back out after I did it the first time and do it again. Um, and then the other thing that I did is I also used one of these and just kind of filed down the outside of the case as well. Although I think getting the fan blades, all the paint off, uh, certainly goes a long way. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to have to do is put this back into the case. Um, so this again is going to mount. Uh, let me make sure I got this the way that it should be. So it should be. So this is facing here. And then, oh yeah, so this is the way it goes. So it goes back in here. Um, so this cable is going to be sticking out this side. Um, and that's because I've got to get my ground strap. Can you see that? There's this screw hole here and the uh, green cable uh, needs to screw onto that. Uh, and I also need to find the nut that's on the other side and trying to get that back on is going to be the first big pain. Once I get that on, then I can mount this back in, get the screws back in those three spots. So I'll have to use my combination of holding with my pliers while I screw everything in. Um, and then I can put this part back together. Um, and then I can start working on the adapter. And once that's done, I'll be able to fire this up. So, okay. Next step, putting this back together. Um, back in a few minutes. All right, back again. Now I've got my Nabu hooked up. I've got my AB connections to my monitor. Everything's on the power up. So this is my first time powering this up. What I'm expecting to have happen is the Nabu will fire up. It should detect the keyboard and then it'll fail on the internet adapter because I don't have that part hooked up yet. But this is sort of the initial test of the hardware. Now with the new fan working. So now with the fan fix done. Here we go. Okay, fan spinning up. I see Nabu over there. That's good. Yep, yeah, looks good. Fan's nice and quiet now. It's not rubbing. All right. I think it's supposed to fail. There we go, adapter failure. All right, perfect. Computer is working. Now the next step is getting the connector. So let's power this off and let's finish that. And then we'll be able to hook this up and get it running. Okay, back in a minute. While I've got this open, I figured I'd give you a little tour of the guts of this machine. Um, let's start off with down here is the Z80 processor. Um, so that's the Zilog 80 or Zilog Z80 processor that's uh, compatible with the Intel 8080 I think it is. Numbers get confusing after a while but uh, essentially it was a clone of a chip with some additional functionality. It was quite popular uh, and cheap back in the day. It's a really neat video. Maybe I'll put a link in the description to it if somebody's done a historical sort of animated history of Zilog and the Z80. Um, but that's the main processor, one of many 8-bit processors, um, but certainly one of the more common ones in a lot of systems, uh, including the, uh, let's see what else had them, well this MSX machines did, uh, the Game Boy had a ZX, a Z80, TRS-80 systems had a Z80. Um, you could get a Z80 card for the Apple II. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, very common processor. Up here, we've got our sound chip, the AY38910. Um, quite common, again, in a lot of sound systems. I believe this is in the Master System, Sega Master System. Um, but certainly MSX is very common for that, and then using a number of different other things too. Uh, there's the Super Game module for the ColecoVision uses it. Uh, and then up here is the TI-9918 uh, video processor. So this is used in the TI-99, it's used in, uh, again, all MSX systems, those three chips, that uh, video chip, the sound chip, and the processor all three of those make up essentially the core of the MSX system. Uh, also the Spectre Video system, which was more, I think, in the Asian markets. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is essentially an MSX machine, just with some slightly different wiring. Um, and it's also got some pin headers here, so you can do expansion 
Um, but again, this never really had much. You got our little RF converter a, a gener video generator that goes out to the uh, video out. Um, you should be able to do a, a mod on this to be able to get a better video signal. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, that's the quick little tour on the inside of the Naboo computer. Okay, just wanted to finish off this video because I'm going to have to do some more research and dig in troubleshooting. Um, just to give you the update where I'm at right now, I've built my adapter cable. I've tried to match the pinouts. Um, I had some issues getting the adapter software connecting to the COM port device for the RS-422, the USB adapter. Uh, but I got that figured out because I had to find a driver. Um, but I'm going to cover that, I think, next video. Uh, along Once I finally get this cable working and I can show this whole thing together. But I just wanted to have a little wrap-up before I shut this off for the week. And uh, I'll post this up and then I'll, I'll try, and, try and troubleshoot my issues for a uh, next video next week. But thanks for tuning in. Step two, at least I got the NAPU started, but... Uh, Still no connection, so that'll be work for next week. See you then.